Whether you live in an old house or you're thinking about buying a vintage, a classic, an older home, there's some really essential red flags on the electrical system that master electrician CJ from CNC Electric in California is gonna tell you all about. With that being said, electrical red flags, let's get going. CJ here with The Build Show, and today we're talking electrical. Not just any electrical, we're talking red flags to look out for when buying or working on a vintage or historic home. Check it out. All right guys, item number one, when it comes to an old home that's 100 plus years old, is the main service. The main service is actually where your utility company brings you power, right? Um, and you wouldn't believe it, but this long ago, oftentimes homes were wired with 50 to 60 amps in a service, which today a modern oven or an air conditioner will use just that. So one of the big things that when you're looking at buying a home of this age is the electrical service and has it been upgraded? What are we talking about upgrading? Uh, you wanna look at your main breaker rating, right? So actually on this home, we have a 100 amp breaker that feeds this house. 100 amps is what I would consider the bare minimum. This house is around 1,000 square feet, so it's not a big guy but you wanna make sure that you take into consideration large electrical loads when you're working with a service size of this. Electrical vehicle charging is a big one. Modern HVAC systems are big watt hogs. So you wanna make sure that the electrical service isn't the original, because if you're dealing with the original, it's gonna be a puny little guy with maybe Edison-based fuses. You've all seen those that screw in. We have a modern breaker here. We actually have the inspection tag of when this bad boy was installed in 2013. So this is around 10 years old and I'm considering this a modern service. Yes, 100 amps is the weak spot, but 100 amps in a modern grounded service is a crucial one. Another thing is the inspectors will flag this, but um, ground rods or is your system grounded and what's the drop look like coming into the house. These are all things that you can point out early. And if it's an older one, make sure you take into consideration that it's gonna need an upgrade. And this is kind of the heart of the electrical system. It could be a costly one. It shouldn't scare you away, but you should be aware of it. Let's quickly touch on why are we doing this? Um, this might be for a homeowner that's purchasing the house again, or you're not anticipating a large remodel. If you're anticipating uh, a large remodel, then maybe, maybe most of this stuff won't matter except the service size. Um, but that taking into consideration, um, if you did have a home inspection, we've all heard the nightmare stories. And if you haven't, I've experienced them. I've been on the service call where a homeowner has purchased a house. The home inspector comes in that does the broad spectrum overview of the entire house, writes up his report with the fine print at the end saying anything in this report if it's not accurate, I'm not responsible. I'm not going to throw all inspectors um, or home inspectors for buyers under the bus. That's not the case. But every once in a while, there is a lot of stuff that sneaks through or falls through the cracks. And so I highly recommend either hiring uh, your electrician or a trained electrician or even yourself to, if you're experienced, to investigate the electrical. And I'm going to show you a few. So we've already investigated the main service. We've determined that it's 100 amps. Um, that being said, it's going to be up to the size of the house and what your requirements are if that's adequate. But that's about an average service size around this neck of the woods and this size of the house. And we deem that A-OK. -okay. Next, we're gonna check out some interior wiring. So check it out. All right, red flag, grounded receptacles, right? Um, we've all been in the homes uh, where you actually have no ground and the ground is a small round. Um, one easy tool that you can go pick up in any box store or electrical supply house is a plug tester. Really simple. It'll light up and tell you if the wiring to your receptacles right here is correct. And if it's not, it'll light up a pair of either reverse wiring or maybe it's missing a wire. So this is a great tool to have and you can actually go around the house and inspect every single receptacle for proper wiring before you even open the box. So check it out. We're actually going to plug it in and you can see we got the two orange lights lit up. And if you pull it out, 
and you see what the two orange lights mean, it's correct. So we got a hot and a neutral and a properly grounded circuit. So we're gonna go around the house and we're gonna do this to every receptacle. And if we see anything that is not lighting up two orange lights, we're gonna investigate that or we're gonna actually write it down on a report and get that inspected by an electrician. All right guys, so just like the main panel outside, the sub panel inside is gonna be the same thing. We're not gonna get way deep into testing and polarity and things like that, like an electrical contractor could certainly do, but this is more of a visual inspection and I'm gonna show you a few red flags to look out for if you open a sub panel or have access to visible wiring. And this is a great one because it was just replaced, the walls open and we can kind of see what's going on. So one um, obvious would be a modern panel. And when I'm talking about a modern panel, we don't want those screw in fuses or if you Google pas uh, panels that are a hazard, there are a few outstanding panels that have been installed in the past um, notably Zinsco and FPE and there's brands that you want to be aware of not to have in your house. This is a modern sub panel with plug on breakers. So we're good there. Another good thing to look out for is actually the wiring that's in the panel. Um, in this case, we can tell that the most of the stuff is modern because this is what we're working with nowadays. Sheathed Romex. Um, oftentimes Romex, even all the way back to the seventies, um, rubber coated is is fine as long as it's got a ground wire in it um, Sometimes the wire will actually have a date on it, too So you can kind of get an, a feel for the era of what it was because they actually have printed dates on some of the newer stuff um, But one real obvious one will be is if you open up a panel and you see a lot of this stuff the old BX uh, cloth wound and the big thing with that is you don't want cloth wound insulation it's gonna have to be replaced. It's just no good. It has a service life and it's expired. Um, another thing to look out for is the ground. And does each one of your cables actually have a copper or a green ground in the sheathing? Um, that's gonna be a modern wire and that's gonna be what you're gonna want. So there's a couple red flags. Another big one is that your grounds and your neutrals are separated on separate ground buses. Uh, or separate buses inside the panel. Um, and that's for a sub panel. In a main panel, you will see the neutral and the ground bonded on the same bus bar. But in a sub panel that's fed downstream from the meter, you need those to be separated. So those are a couple few items. Um, also the feed coming in. We're really looking for wear and tear uh, hot spots that are gonna be very obvious. So check that out, that's a sub panel. Another red flag to look for when working with an older home and an older home that you're not going to completely retrofit is a common one. Homeowner says we want to install some dimmers. And in this case, this house actually has modern dimmers. So I'm pretty sure that the junction box size that I would be concerned about um, is okay. But we're going to open this up and I'm going to show you. We're talking about junction box size for a reason. Um, and the reason being is the dimmers uh, these days are much larger than the switches that we had 123 years ago. So oftentimes homeowner will uh, have a home like this and then want to put in a modern dimmer and they physically won't fit in the box. So I want to say that these boxes have been upgraded or deeper. Uh, when they were originally installed. And then I also want to do a visual on the wiring because I know we looked at the sub panel and we're going to crawl in the attic in a few minutes, but I want to check what does the wiring look like in the junction box? What do the splices look like? Um, and these guys are a little short, uh, not the worst I've seen. Um, but another thing you can note is the wiring going into the boxes is that old cloth sheathed wire. So at some point in time, leaving the sub panel and getting to the, these rooms, the old wiring is still existing in this wall. So that's something to note. It's not necessarily um, something that you have to completely rip apart and rewire, but you want to have an electrician look at it. You want to make sure that the wiring inside the walls is healthy. And, of, uh, and then also again, that these junction boxes are deep enough to fit modern dimmers because a lot of these old houses, especially 123 year old houses, 
had junction boxes this deep when you need them about this deep. And we got a video on the build show if you haven't seen it all about junction boxes, but that is red flag number four that we just investigated when working with an old house. I'm just saying that's one more red flag. Okay. Number eight. Okay. And that's one more red flag when working on old houses that you want to check out. All right, we're talking vintage homes, classic homes. Everyone loves them, um, but you got to be aware that the bones are old. Most of the time, that's a good thing, but with electrical, it's usually not. So one thing I cannot recommend enough is crawl space and attic. Crawl them if you can. Get in any nook and cranny. It's going to be worth it. So we're going to dive in or dive up into this attic, and we're going to see what the wiring looks like behind the scenes. So let's go, baby. Can't be scared to crawl. There we go. All right, I'll see you up top. All right, guys, we're up in the attic and we're doing a visual again. A um, couple key things to look out for are junction boxes. Junction boxes and attics are not necessarily a bad thing, but one thing you wanna make sure is the junction boxes have lids on them, that your cables are properly secured. In this case, this wiring is gonna to need to be secured. Um, again, we're looking for old cloth wound um, cable, uh, open junction boxes, uh, possible rodents eating rat, uh, wires. That's a big one, guys. Uh, rodents like to eat rubber for some reason. I'm not a rodent expert, but that is a number one service call uh, on some of these houses that don't have the attic secure. Rodents can be an issue and they love eating electrical wires. So um, those are a couple obvious ones. Um, another thing that you can look out for is are your exhaust fans vented? It's not necessarily an electrical item, but it is associated with the electric fans. Um, so those are a couple red flags that you should check out. Uh, don't be scared to crawl the attic. Don't be scared to get in a crawl space. This could be a big investment um, and this is, or it could be your house. So check out those red flags, crawl the attic. All right guys, so a quick recap what we just went over. Red flags on an electrical system on a vintage or old home, uh, main panel, sized, and age. Those are two big factors when, um, when looking at a main panel. Sub panel, modern breakers, no fuses, please. Wiring with ground. So you're gonna check your receptacles with that plug tester and you're gonna do a visual on any box that you can get open. The more, the better. Um, junction box sizings uh, for dimmers, big one. And so these are just a few things that you should look out for and I hope it was full of information. Catch us on the Build Show for more electrical content. I'll see you later. Don't you love CJ? He is amazing and he's shooting videos on some fabulous Napa Valley, wine country, San Francisco job sites that he's building with some of the best builders I've seen. This guy Dave Haynes, he builds for all the time. Just fabulous builders amazing job sites. You should be following his work. Follow him on Instagram, CNC Electric. Also, go back and check out his bid show videos. He's been with us now for about three or four years. He has a ton of fabulous electrician related videos, but as a builder, I want to understand that trade better. So I love watching his videos as well. Guys, the way that you know he's got a new video though, in the description below is a link to our newsletter. That newsletter is gonna to come to your inbox twice a week and say, here's what's new from CJ this week. Here's Matt's new video or Travis or Steve or Jake or any one of our new people. So make sure you sign up for that newsletter. That's really critical to make sure that you're not missing some of our fantastic and free content. With that being said, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.